I'd like to welcome everyone to the meeting of the Infrastructure, Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee on the 10th of October 2024. Can I remind you um, that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube? Thank you. Right, we have apologies from Councillor Lee Clark, uh, M Bailey and Councillor Oates. We are also... Um, uh, Councillor Margaret Clark will be late, so we're expecting her to uh, to join us when she she gets here. Right, um, right. Minutes of the previous meeting. We're looking to approve the minutes of the previous meeting on the t held on the twenty second of August. Do we have a mover? Thank you. That's Councillor Lee uh, Wood and a seconder. Councillor Statham. Thank you. Right. So I've got to sign those. Yes. Yeah. Oh, can we have a vote, please? All in favour? Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Right, are there any declarations of interest? No, thank you. Right, F uh, update from the chair. First of all, apologies, I have not set up yet the um, working group for looking at the fly tipping and bulky waste connections and things like that. I do apologise. I'll get that. Uh, done as soon as I can. Um, I'd also like to provide an update with regards to a question that was raised in relation to the Nature Recovery Declaration at the meeting of the 22nd. Uh, the question that was asked around the report stating that council should seek to manage at least 30% of their green space and wildlife clarification around how big an area this was. The officer provided a response at the meeting, however later confirmed that this was incorrect. The following information is correct. Total area of Tamworth is 3,084 hectares. Is that a hectare? Yeah, I think that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Total of TBC owned grass space, gr green spaces, is 501.549 hectares, which is around 60% of the total area of Tamworth. Total designated Ocals open space is 456.3404 hectares. 90% of the total, the rest is verges or strips of odd bits of land left unmanaged. Total designated as nature reserves, um, SBIs, LOGs, is 171.3671 hectares, which is 34% of the total. Work is underway to map the remaining areas managed for nature i.e. areas left unmown under trees, historical hedges on playing fields, etc. So I hope that clarifies everything. Uh, responses to reports of the Infrastructure uh, Safety and Growth Committee, there were none. Consider considerations of matters referred to ISAC from Cabinet, none. We now come to item seven, Heritage Engagement Officer. And I do apologise for the late um, delivery of this paperwork. Uh, and I hope you've all had a good chance to read it. Okay, um, this is the report of the Portfolio Holder for People's Services, Engagement and Leisure and the Assistant Growth Regeneration to provide the committee with an update on the range of activities and outcomes achieved. Sorry. For Tamworth residents by the Heritage Engagement Coordinator Post. So if I can welcome Lara Rowe. And hand over to you, Lara. Thank you. Okay, the Thank you both. Um, so I'm here to introduce the Heritage Engagement Coordinator Review. Um, councillors, you've got the report and the community uh, impact assessment in front of you. But just for the sake of the people watching, I'll go through some of the uh, executive summary. So since January 2024, the Heritage Engagement Coordinator has developed and delivered a varied programme of heritage craft activities. These activities have been delivered primarily in the community spaces with local groups and charities, including young mums, elderly residents, young adults with special educational needs, asylum seekers, dementia and church groups. A number of showcase artwork pe artworks pieces have subsequently been displayed at Tamworth Castle, St Edifice Church and Ankerside Shopping Centre also featured in the recent Athelstan 1100 Town Festival. So some of the project highlights included but not limited to uh, wood carving workshops with asylum seekers who uh, were being temporarily housed at a local hotel. 
a blacksmith workshop with young mums, elderly residents and young, ad young adults with special educational needs who are forging um, handmade metal poppies, 20 community groups who were involved in the creation of a giant Saxon flag which measured 9 times 6 metres to represent the Kingdom of Mercia, which we were the um, ancient capital of, which is very interesting. Um, well, to me as a history teacher anyway, and um, it, the recommendation is that the committee note the wide range of opportunities that have already been created by the establishment of the Heritage Engagement Coordinator posts and that um, UK SPF activity funding. Do you have any questions? Oh, I think we can't. Right, sorry, Lara, you were... <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, I've actually got a film to show of some of the activities, if, if you're happy to, for us to play it. Thank you.
Sorry, Chair, do you mind if I just say a couple of things about the project? Is that okay? Um, Sorry about the sound quality on the film. I will share the film so that you can hear what some of the participants had to say. Um, I think what I'd like to convey to you in review of this post, which is obviously a grant-funded post and therefore due to finish at the end of March um, 2025, is the ability of this area of activity to reach communities who currently don't engage with our local heritage. So hopefully you could see, and not all of the groups are represented on that film, but you can see that you know we, we work with all sorts of people outside the castle, outside the museum, in environments that are accessible to a whole range of people. Um, what you didn't see on the film were the um, hotel residents who also worked with us for quite some time on um, a wood carving project. So we really are able to reach um, lots of diverse communities within, you know, within our town. Um, and that obviously is completely um, in addition to what we already offer as part of the museum and um, heritage offer. So um, I hope some of that came across in the film. And if anyone's got any questions, I'd be really happy to take them. Sorry, um, I just wanted to congratulate you and all the team. Um, I saw uh, a couple of bits and bobs. Was the um, was it the coracle boat making? Was that part of it? That I went down and saw that, and it was fantastic. And I think what you're doing is so important, bringing heritage and community together, because sometimes I feel like that connection isn't prioritised. But you know, people that live in Tamworth don't always know about the heritage. So I really hope that. Um, you regain some funding or can get a grant to continue this um uh, next year and if there's anything that we can do um to help with that please let us know councillor price God, I'm having a nightmare <laughs> tonight, and I, firstly apologies i was searching for something for the meeting clicked on the wrong thing um, yeah, I just want to uh, echo um, Councillor Stavens' um, words. Um, I think it's really important that we celebrate heritage um, and we get community engagement, especially with the younger generation. Um, and I think it's really um, it's really fascinating to see um, children getting in engaged in um, projects that that have probably um, been lost through the generations. It's good to see them coming back and them skills being passed on to the younger generation again. So I think it's really commendable work that, that's um, gone on through this post and, and very worthwhile. Um, and yeah, as, as Councillor Statham said, hopefully you get some more funding for that to be able to continue that work. Um, but if if we don't, then I do feel that as a, as a council, we should do everything that we can to try and continue that anyway. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, I've just got a couple of points. Um, the other thing that I was thinking is, you know, some of the items that you've made, like the poppies, yeah. and you've displayed in the castle, yeah. are there other areas that you could display them, such as the assembly rooms, or when we, if we open the uh, front desk at Marmion House, that you know, in the past when that was open, there were children's artwork put in there and things like that. Something like that would be, because some people don't understand where we're coming from in our heritage, and that we're, we're you know we're so much older than Birmingham, and you know we're an ancient town. We've got so much um, her history that we should uh, celebrate it really. And I'd just like to echo. Councillor Stavon and Councillor Price and, and just hope that we do get the funding to carry on because I think it's an excellent idea yeah. and, and you know especially people with special needs as well and isolated like young mums that can be very isolated I think it's a very important part and it, it's not quantifiable with money all the time thank you right we've been asked to endorse the report Right, uh, to note uh, the wide range of opportunities that have already been created by the establishment of the Heritage Engagement Coordinator uh, post and the UK Shared Prosperity Funding Activity Funding. Right, so all those in favour? Oh, have we got a mover? That's Councillor Price, second to Councillor Adams. All those in favour? Thank you. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, and you can leave now. <laughs>
I'm just glad it all works. <laughs> <laughs> if you share the link, you know, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. If you share yeah. Yeah. And, and the film was lovely, thank you. Oh, thank you. I won't tell you how many hours I spent thinking of that. <laughs> Right. We now we now come to the public part of the um, heritage, uh, not the heritage. Sorry, the future high school high street. Oh, it's high school high street fun. Um, can I introduce Councillor Foster, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm sitting in in place of uh, Councillor. Uh, Carol Dean, who's unavailable to this evening, but I do sit on the board. Um, I'm just going to introduce the um, the uh, report. Um, from our side, uh, we are seeing good progress now and good traction in delivering um, um, the um, the vision. The um, we're moving basically into an implementation phase now, which was we were in a sort of design phase or whatever. The um, <clears throat> the costings have, have firmed up. Um, and we're seeing very little movement on the costings front in terms of uh, you know, the budgets allocated. There will always be some movements because of the fact that, you know, when we get on site, things will, will crop up, you know, and that's just, just life. But, you know, as we go through the, um, uh, the implementation phase, those, the, all those costs will be firmed up and, and they're within reasonably within our budgets. So I won't say any more, I'll just hand over to the officer, we'll take you through the report. But from our side, we're, we're very happy with the progress so far. Oh. Sorry, happy to answer any questions. Right. Can uh, I now ask uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, the officer, please. Uh, Alice, isn't it? Sorry, I've forgotten your surname, Alice. We apologise. Right. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I won't go through this in great detail, but just for the benefit of those that might not have read the report, I will just give a brief rundown of where we are across the Future High Street Fund programme. Um, just to start with middle entry and flex, um, significant progress has been made on this since our last um, meeting of this committee back in June. Happy to say that the demolition of the vacant units in the south middle entry is now complete and we are firmly in our build phase, having now executed the contract for the flexible uh, units builds. Um, in terms of middle entry, um, we've had approval this week from the board to proceed to contract on that piece of work. We're just waiting for the owners of middle entry to consent to the works license and then we can execute that contract. Um, work's currently due to start in the new year on that if all goes well. Um, in terms of the stopping up application with highways, um, part of that has now been consented, um, the 247 the Section 111 agreement um, is still in process and review with the County Council. Um, moving on to Castle Gateway, um, we've signed the nationwide legal agreement. Um, as you've probably seen, the Peel Cafe build was completed and we then handed over to Nationwide for their fit out. Um, it's probably not escaped people's attention that Nationwide's contractor, ISG, has unfortunately gone to administration. Um, we've heard from Nationwide today that they do have another contractor that they're going to be using and hopefully they'll be back on site in October. So despite that setback, we have fairly minimal delay um, and therefore once that's complete and MBS move into that building, we will then be able to demolish as planned um, their existing property on Market Street. Um, back in July, there was a planning uh, application for the new nationwide building shop frontage um, and that was consented. In terms of the Market Street properties, um, at board this week, we approved the Stage 2 contract um, to proceed with that. So after completing the Enabling Works package, that will now go ahead once that contract is hopefully signed this week. Um, in terms of the rest of the Castle Gateway development, the bridge works are likely to start in the new year following the fireworks event. Um, and the rest of the Castle Gateway designs for the landscaping that replaces the old nationwide building um, is currently awaiting planning consent. We're hoping to take that to committee um, in November. Um, again, we're in, we're in dialogue with Staffordshire Highways over any of their queries over the planning process in regards to that. Um, moving on lastly to the college quarter, um, the Tamworth Enterprise Centre, or the second Tamworth Enterprise Centre, I should say, is uh, proceeding at a pace. We're hoping to complete that project in November of this year. So that might be the first one that we've finished um, after the Peel Cafe, um, which will be Nationwide's new building, as I mentioned. 
Um, moving on to St Edith's Square, um, we've got the planning application due to go to committee next week. Um, if all goes well with that, then we should be hoping to start work in November. Um, we're continuing engagement with traders who are affected and local businesses as required. Um, see if there's anything else. Just moving on to the general sort of other headings in this report. So programme remains challenging, but as I've outlined, we have forecast completion dates for most of the programme. In terms of budget, as previously mentioned, um, this does tend to sort of have a little bit of leeway and movement depending on what happens on site. But at the moment, all looking positive and we're not looking to be drastically over budget at all. We're also um, looking to be contractually committed um, in the next week or so on our remaining projects, as I said, because we've got a couple of contracts left to execute. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else on budget. Oh, spend deadline. So our spend deadline is still March 2025 um, and we continue to liaise with the department on that via our monitoring reports. Um, in terms of communications, I've already alluded to a little bit of trader and sort of local business engagement. Um, we continue to do that as a priority. Um, and as you've probably seen, we've been trying to put out a few more press releases and things to keep the general public informed and engaged. Some of you may have seen the video that I did for the inside of the second Enterprise Centre a few weeks ago. We'll continue to do fun things like that um, as and when we can and as we progress with the programme. Um, any questions from anyone? Councillor Statham. Um, yeah, just in regards to, uh, is it ISG? I just want to make sure I've got that right. So um, obviously it is, it was worrying initially to hear about obviously them going into administration, but I'm really reassured to hear that you found a new contractor. One thing that has sprung to mind and that a resident actually said to me today, um, do we know if there's any local employees that are facing redundancy that worked for ISG who would be working on this project? And I don't know whether that's a question that you guys can answer. If not, i um, happy to go away and do my own kind of work on that. But I think if we have people that are now facing unemployment as a result to that, how are we going to support them? Um, and then I, I, just that I'm excited to see it all come together. I think some of us had concerns about how kind of sparse and, you know, it wasn't necessarily connected. But I think it's it's, you know you've worked really hard on the comms and I think it's it's coming together really well so congratulations to all the team that have worked on that thank you uh, just come back on the question about ISG they're nationwide contractor so we give them the grant to do their fit out but we don't have direct engagement with their contractor so I'm unsure unfortunately about you know local employment and impact on that um, I'm sure we can ask the question and see how far we get with it um, I'm not sure for definite, but I do believe there might be some staff that are remaining involved with that project, certainly their project manager, but beyond that is probably not information we have, unfortunately. Excuse me. So we look to be able to spend the future high street fund grant by March 2025. We did look at this recently in light of the commitment deadline, which was the 30th of September. Um, and it looks like we might be about 95K short, but I'm pretty reassured that we could find somewhere to spend that. And out of 21 and a half million, 95K seems fairly small in the grand scheme of things. However, we, we are looking at that and trying to make sure that that is obviously spent within the deadline. Um, if we do come across any potential delays, and obviously we have to report those back to the department. Um, with regards to the rest of the programme, it won't have escaped attention that obviously we are delivering beyond the March 2025 date. We're going to be using other match funding from that, from TBC, things like Section 106, sill pots, that sort of thing. Um, so if there is an amount of money um that is left over just again i might not know the answer to this so i'm just asking it might be a silly question um what is the um kind of process of um deciding how that money is going to be spent where it's going to be spent what's the kind of like the process of for that so the department are quite strict about moving money around different budgets so it would have to be within 
the existing budget and we would have to find somewhere within that to do that. Um, given that it sits within the General Castle Gateway and Market Street sort of properties project budget, and given that those are kind of older buildings, I'm sure we'll probably find some way to spend that money. Um, and like I say, we do also have the match funding. The priority will be that we spend the Future High Street Fund grant before we dip into that match funding. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's not a question, uh, more, just, more just comments. Um, it's really, I think it's really important um, for the general public to understand the difference between our contractors and ISG as nationwide contractors. Um, there's been a lot of um, a lot of talk um, on social media um, about ISG going into administration um, and how, as a council, we've been silent and not said anything about the facts. Well, we wouldn't because they're not our contractor. So I think it's really important to get that message out there. Um, I'd be interested to, interested to hear what communications we've put out to distance ourselves from that um, and to reassure the general public that the contractors that we've got in place are um, still um, are still trading um, and there's there's not um, the, there's no chance of them going into administration in the near future that that's really important to give the public that reassurance when there is so much public funding being put into this project um, but, uh, but apart from that um, I think the, the the projects moving along um, really nicely as it as it has done it's really encouraging to start seeing um, buildings uh, going upwards. Um, it, it, for, for me, uh, the the proof in the pudding, so to speak, is going to be the end when it all comes together. The the, the vision has always been really ambitious, um, and we've put some really nice designs in there. Um, so to actually see all that come to fruition um, is going to be the the real testament to the to the hard work that you guys and the team have, have, have put into this project from from the start. Um, as we know, and we spoke about many times before, there's been there was a lot of work that went into this before we even put a spade into the ground, um, and that's we're now starting to see the results of that. So you know, to, to be able to uh, see Nationwide move into their new building, um, to start seeing the Gateways project, um, start opening up that space, and and sort of uh, draw the eye through the centre of the town up to the church. That that's what this project is all about. Um, so yeah, really, really good, really good to see we're on track. We're not over budget. Um, you, you did commit that when you came back to council for the extra funding that that, that was going to be it. So it's good to hear that we're on track with that. Um, and yeah, it just thank you for the, the continued updates and, and the really in-depth reports that you bring to us. It, it is really appreciated. So thank you. Um, to come back on the PR question, I've seen something circulating this week that I think has gone for approval that we're going to put out um, it's fairly minimal. It just says that obviously Nationwide are looking for another contractor. Obviously, since that time, we found out today that they're probably going to be back on site within the next few weeks in any case. So people should see activity fairly soon. All been well. Yeah, I just wanted to mention as well um, to the public, as probably comms haven't gone out yet, but it was really good today um, to go to the top in our event um, with colleagues in the room um, to see, you know, and celebrate the new college site. I think um, I know there's a lot of public concern over it. Me personally, I think it's a great, um, a great addition to our town centre. It will bring so much footfall to local businesses um, and it will really bring some life and energy um, back into town which I think is needed so um, yeah it was a great event and I'm sure there'll be some comms that the public can have a look at I know that I've put some stuff out so yeah great event Jin? the repairs to the bandstand took a lot longer than everybody envisaged because the work needed to be that wasn't that that was unforeseen have we checked that there's any for any potential delays with the uh, castle gateway bridge are we happy with what's we have a set program so i think they're fairly happy that we can deliver with the program that's been set we had to do various sort of investigations like trial ho holes trial holes is that what they're called yeah and various groundworks to obviously ensure that there wasn't anything down there that 
A, was of you know archaeological interest, and just to say, even with that, we will have a watching brief from an archaeologist. So if something was found on site, obviously that can hold you up for a couple of days. It happened at our flex uh, development the other week. It's not uncommon, but it tends to be a couple of days here and there. And again, we have to get consents from Historic England, given it's a scheduled ancient monument, but the process for that is already underway. So again, we don't envisage there to be any delays with that at this point in time. All right, thank you. Right, we have uh, a recommendation that the committee note the progress and challenges of the programme of works. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Clark, seconder Councillor Price. All those in favour? Thank you. Abstentions? Right, OK. Yeah, that, that's fine. And, and nice to see you, Councillor Clark. I know that you were delayed. So thank you very much for coming. Right, thank you very much then. Anna, you wanted a word? Just very briefly, just to say that there's an invite to uh, the scrutiny committee uh, to join the planning committee next Tuesday at 5.30. We're going to just have a quick look behind the nationwide building, um, which we've now obviously taken ownership of as part of the programme. Um, and we're going to do it before the clocks change, so it's light, and you can see what's going on there. So you're very welcome to join us. Um, it's just going to be a 15-minute site visit. Um, if you want to have a look at, you know, what it would be without the nationwide in situ and what we're trying to achieve by opening up the town centre with the castle ground. So um, th it's been extended. I think you've had invites yes, now as well. Yes, thank you. Just, yeah. to, just to say, w you're very welcome. Thank you. That, that'll be worthwhile, I think. Right, can we thank uh, then Anna and Alice and uh, let them go? <laughs> thank you. And, and Councillor Foster, thank you. Right. Come to item nine, maintenance of estates and open spaces. Um, and I would like to welcome the Assistant Director for Environment, Culture and Wellbeing and Mark, her operator, wasn't the operations uh, manager? Mark's Deputy Operations Manager. Deputy Operations Manager. And this is on the um, agenda tonight as a result of the members of the public and comments made by uh, members of the council um, concerning uh, the operations that we undertake. So over to you then, Hannah. Thank, thank you, Chair, and thank you, members, for... Um Sorry, I forgot that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, members, for having us this evening. Um, just like to pass on apologies from Mark Greaves, our operation manager. He would have been here, but unforeseen circumstances meant he, he hasn't been available. So Mark has kindly stepped into the breach, who is our fairly new um, deputy operations manager, but was formerly um, our tree officer at the authority. So he's uh, <laughs> worked with us for a while and longer than I have at the authority. So what we'd like to do is just go through um, a few slides for you. We can see them beautifully the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> do, do members have them on your screens? Oh, so yeah, if I get started. Um, so what we'd like to do is just give you an overview. Um, the chair has been up to the depot and had a visit and we've gone through a few things with the chair and with the leader and deputy leader of the council and the chief executive. So that's been well received. So hopefully this will act as an information for you to understand the services, what we provide and how we try to do that to the best of our ability with the resources we've got. So a bit of an overview um, for you to start with. So um, our street scene operational services... Um, obviously uh, one of our biggest frontline services that the council operates and we have a range of services that run through there and we oversee the parks and open spaces that are um, in council ownership our cemeteries land drainage trees our street scene uh, maintenance of maintenance of uh, community amenities so things like um, council owned benches and play parks things like that um, we also work um, very closely with Anna and her team and other colleagues around supporting um, the fairly recently adopted nature declaration of uh, the authority and the biodiversity work um, that we're all working towards in the climate change um, agenda uh, the team also support a wide range of other council functions so everything from arranging all of the venues um, 
uh, in conjunction with democratic services for the elections through to supporting the large scale events that we host as an authority and supporting um, us being able to hold external hires on the castle ground for example alongside our arts and events team um, in terms of team structure, you've got a structure chart there. So there's um, ordinarily, if we're at full complement of staff, we have 61 staff who work across all those different services, um, who work to the best of their ability. And we also, on occasion, will employ temporary staff to support with some of the service delivery, which takes place uh, predominantly in the cutting season, for example, with our um, garden assistance scheme that we do in conjunction with our colleagues in housing. Um, and we also have recently um, members kindly approved in the last policy change round, so last financial year, a REACT team. So that's a team of three people who have now been brought on board who can react to um, uh, some of the inquiries that we're getting on a daily basis. So that supports us because it means we're not having to take people off the planned maintenance which is taking place. Um, yes, we do have to do that on occasion, depending on the situation. Um, so, for example, when we had the unfortunate scenes in August, the team were out at five o'clock in the morning helping with the clear up operations from that. Um, but the REACT team has really added that responsiveness and also means we can maintain our normal operations as, as best as um, possible. In terms of the next slide, that shows you the service operations. So all the different areas of responsibility from the estates, cemeteries and burials, um, our fantastic seven nature reserves, local nature reserves that we've got, and our country parks. So we work alongside our partners at Staffordshire Wildlife Trust who work with us on our Wild About Tamworth project and engage and support volunteers um, for the management and maintenance of some of those areas alongside officers. Um, our formal parks, our trees, our play areas, our pitches. So we've got um, uh, 15 football pitches and five rugby pitches that we maintain in the borough. And we've also just got the new 3G pitch at Anchor Valley, which has just um, gone live this season. And town centre cleanliness, so things like all of the litter bins and, and things like that and litter picking. And we also support and work again alongside closely with Anna, um, we're, we're planning colleagues with the finance team around supporting infrastructure and capital projects, so supporting the work around the allocation of Section 106 funding, community infrastructure level, level funding, and ensuring that's spent on the things that are identified within that, um, and we're just identifying a prioritisation programme on that. And then to the right-hand side of that are all the different sort of res maintenance responsibilities that, that we fulfil within that, so whether it be our fabulous... Um, floral displays in the castle grounds um, and the planters uh, add that nice bit of colour through to our um, hedge cutting, weed management, fly tip removal, graffiti removal, bowling greens. Um, so they're all listed there. I won't go through them all in, in detail. Um, the next slide just shows what we do specifically as well to support our housing, um, our, well, our neighbourhood and assets teams with our housing tenants. Um, so we have everything from our alleyways um, and hotspots, our high-rise minimatic service, which is a fairly new thing that we've bought in-house. We were previously paying an external contractor to do that, but it's more cost-effective for us to do that internally. Um, management of the green spaces, the assisted gardening scheme, uh, where residents will apply in to the housing team if they need support. And there's quite a, a strict criteria on that, and then we'll support the cutting of grass. Tree management, which... Um, uh, Mark can come on to further detail on that for us. Um, drying areas, garage areas and community projects. So an example would be um, we had some feedbacks from residents. They'd like some planting schemes. Done. So we worked along the sheltered scheme managers and we worked with them to support a nice planted scheme uh, within those areas. And we're looking to do more of that. Now we've just got up to a full complement of staff within that team. I think alongside that planned maintenance, it's important to highlight that we do have... Um, uh, they are reactive to the service requests that come in as well from residents. So we have our planned maintenance and, and schedules. Um, obviously, we can be affected by the weather and things like that, which we can't control, unfortunately. Um, but that supports us. In terms of resources, we were asked just to provide the breakdown of the different um, amounts of funding that the HRA paid into. So the table demonstrates that everything from the HMA resource to a contribution to some of those services, so the grounds maintenance, um, the assisted gardening scheme, the street cleansing and tree works. So using tree works as an example, um, 
our, our scheme was slightly reduced last year because we weren't at full complement of staff team. Um, so that's just getting up to speed. But the team will, will have something reported. They'll go out and inspect and then they'll, cut, they'll recommend the works. Our housing colleagues will approve those works and then we'll conduct those works and charge back on that basis, just so you're aware. So overall, the service, at the end of last financial year, so you've got a complete year picture, cost us 4.23 million. And um, the net cost of council was 2.7 seven two million because we have a contribution from the hra staffordshire county council will pay us from some of the grass verge um work but likewise we have a reverse agency agreement with staffordshire county council so we pay them to maintain the um, pavements and things like that and there's regular meetings that take place with officers from the county council um, and we are looking at opportunities where we can um generate further income so something we're trialing at the moment with the tree work getting back up and running um we are selling the um waste product for want of a better phrase sorry mark that might not be the technical phrase <laughs> for the um the material that's produced from the tree work um the chickens thank you <laughs> um for biomass um it's only a small return but it's how we're starting to think about how we can um, get something a, a little back from that so um just so you're aware. Um, the next couple of slides just demonstrate the statutory services um, that we run, that we do in conjunction with other departments, and also the non-statutory services, so um, the things we don't have to run but we do, so that's everything from the children's play areas, um, bus shelters, um, we maintain some of those, we also have a company who maintain them, um, we don't pay them to maintain them because they get the right to do advertising on the side of the bus shelters and things like that. So we'll be reviewing the contracts for that moving forward. And um, we've said about the section 106 and capital and the open space cemetery management and development. Um, we're asked just to add in a slide around service risk and I'm sure you can appreciate with the size of the workforce, um, making sure we've got a full complement of staff so we can deliver the services uh, fully can be a challenge. Um, but we're working hard to make sure we've got that really good. I think we're pretty much at full comp. We've just had a, one person leave, I think, but we're pretty much at full complement now with Mark coming into the deputy role. We've just got a new tree officer in. Um, so that's, um, that's really helping. And what we're trying to do is ensure where we can be, be multi-skilled across the team. So team members can fulfill a number of different roles. Obviously the specialisms like the tree work, where you have to have special qualifications to be able to climb trees yep. and, and use chainsaws and things like that. So, but we're trying to add resilience in, so we're minimising that risk. Um, a risk, but an opportunity is making sure we utilise um, technology to support our operations. Um, Otherwise, we risk falling behind what we could be doing to maximise our efficiency. So we are in conversations with our um, IT colleagues. So things like us being able to go out and do things electronically rather than being paper based and then having to then input it back into a system. So we don't have dual duplication. And there's technology out there now which um, you can put in bins and you get bin sensors. So it tells you how full a bin is. So you don't necessarily empty it as frequently if it's a, a low um, throughput bin um, so the teams are being as efficient and, and routed as as efficiently as possible and then um, we've put in the um, details so what what really helps us is by um, members or members of the public uh, utilizing our reporting system through the borough council website there is also the phone number they can call to report any issues in the reason this really helps us is because uh, we can then track something that comes through as you can appreciate officers are out and about a lot um, they're not sat at their their, their desks uh, they're very active they're out um, so by having it through our m3 system currently that enables us to track any requests that come through so just to give you an idea um, we got the statistics so last year we dealt with 3224 service requests that came in in addition to our all that routine work that we do and, and work hard to, to fulfill for the for the borough um, so that does really help us and if we can encourage people to do that then it just makes it easier for us to be able to track through and respond to uh, to members um, 
and public's inquiries. Mark, did you just want to explain about, I know trees can be a hot topic for us sometimes, so if you just explain how we manage our trees in terms of our hierarchy of tree management, that might be useful for members if that's okay. Basically the, the biggest, <coughs> sorry, if you can hear me, uh, the biggest, or the way we scheme all our tree maintenance is predominantly on a dead, dying, diseased basis or about to cause damage. So anything that's dead or dying, we'll remove it. Anything that's about to cause damage, we'll go out and uh, do whatever work is required on it. The way the servicing is geared, um, if a service request comes in on our N3, the assessor will then go out, assess what work needs to be done. That goes back onto the M3 system, that's handed to the tree cutters, and then they work through the schedule of work to get the tree done. <clears throat> and then once it's done, the bill will go to housing if it's theirs or it's absorbed by us if it's open spaces and so forth and the prog and the process continues. <clears throat> Obviously we've then got storm damage which is totally different. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's ours or anybody else's. If there's a risk, if it's a fallen tree, if it's over a road or a pathway, we just go out and get it done uh, and then assess whose it was afterwards. Um, if it is that it's one of ours or it's one of staff's, we can back claim the money for it. If it's private, then it's pretty much we've done it on a duty of care basis and it just gets sorted. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's thanks, about Mark. it. Oh. I think um, also um, one thing for members to understand, not all trees are the Borough Council's trees. There's a lot of trees that are in the ownership of Staff Staffordshire County Council. So what the team will check first and foremost on our Terra Nova databases is it owned by the Borough Council or is it in the ownership of Staffordshire County Council? Um, and also, given the conservation areas we've got in the Borough, um, if it is in a conservation area, it's got a tree protection order, then we have a further set due process you have to go through to get permission to be able to do yep. work on a tree as well. So just so colleagues um, are aware of that, because um, quite a lot of the time we'll get requests in, but the trees will actually turn out to be... Um, Staffordshire County Council so we will advise um, on that basis but as Mark says if there's something that's you know if you think back to winter last year in December alone we dealt with 90 trees or something through yeah, storm okay. damage and, and things so um, it was a big additional um, pressure on the team so obviously if we're dealing with that then we can't do the routine things because we're dealing with um, you know making things safe which is utmost priority for us. That's a little snapshot, yes, is that thank okay? You very much, yes. Thank uh, you. Just, uh Uh, thank you for providing that context of kind of how you manage trees because I think that's something that a lot of us didn't know about. It's really useful to have that in the back of your mind when you're reporting and you're like shaking your fist going, why is this tree not getting removed? So it's nice to have that context. Um, I just wondered, I, I, obviously as you, you've explained, it is quite a complex procedure, but I just wondered if you have any time scale that you work to from kind of initial report because I did have a resident who did wait quite a while for a tree to be removed, but I just wondered if... For, for kind of our purpose, if there's any time scale in writing or anything that you've got that we can provide residents with? There's no set time scale because obviously every tree is different and everything that comes in can change what we've planned. We can have six months worth of work planned, but then we have one storm and that puts everything back. Um, what we will do is prioritise. If it's dead, dying, disease, dangerous, or it's about to cause damage, it gets done as soon as we possibly can. If something else comes along that's more priority, that takes priority over it and we get to it as yeah. fast as we can. Some of the maintenance side can and has been in the past quite delayed. We've had massive staffing problems, which has been addressed by um, basically raising the wages of um, tree operators because we couldn't compete with the outside world and we just couldn't keep the staff in. We've addressed that now. We've now got a fantastic team and we are racing through the work compared with what's gone before yeah, but it's just a case of as it comes we get it done as fast as we possibly can and we have only got uh, a three-man tree team for the whole of Tamworth mm -hmm. so sometimes come the storms we have taken on contractors if the workload's been just that we cannot 
uh, keep up with it. But again, as uh, Hannah said, it's a very qualified job. You can't just throw anybody on it. So the, the massive uh, green cutters, um, hedge cutters and uh, grass cutters that we've got cannot do tree work because they're just not qualified or yeah. trained. <coughs> if I may chair as well, mm. I think one thing we've identified as team we we're actually talking about this morning is um, developing a, a, a greater comprehensive frequently asked question that we can put on our website for, for, for residents. So um, all the regular things that we're getting through as inquiries, we can, we're, we're going to pull that together as a team to ensure that we're you know providing that information so so it helps to inform our residents of, of what we're doing we think that will be a good step forward we've got some information on there but i think we acknowledge you know we we've got further work to do and we're, we're keen to ensure we do do that right i've got uh, council stadium again yeah, sorry, it was just a quick one. Thank you for providing that context, because to be honest, even if we don't have a timeline of dates, that line of, you know, you're working as quickly as you can, that's that's more than enough, I think, that we can tell people. Um, in terms of the frequently asked questions, um, just on a kind of accessibility side, um, not everybody has the internet. I deal with residents nearly every week who don't have access to the internet. We, we all, you know, know that it's a problem and hopefully in the near future we will be able to address that with the front desk but if in the meantime what what kind of plan do you have in place to make sure that that information is accessible to everyone that doesn't necessarily have the internet thank you um i have go on you want to do um, so um we have um started doing re-engagement with the tenant consultative group with, with with our housing residents um, and they have a newsletter as well so we'll put that out but I think you make a good point in terms of having it accessible at points where our residents may go in so once we've developed them um, across the services then we can ensure there's hard copy um, for example at the assembly rooms at the and Mar Marmion House main reception where the touch points are mainly for residents I think there's an opportunity as well potentially for us to look at where we've got our events you know things like we love tamworth if we continue that in the future um you know potentially having information stalls and things like that might might prove useful um for, for people so they can just sort of come in and say because we do get a lot of people you know i get a lot of people who are saying oh trees on a road verge um, generally those trees will probably be Staffordshire county council but a lot of people just assume it's a district council um but that's why we have to have to check and then we will always um, re refer people back. So, um, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're trying to Im uh, evolve our way of um, yeah. how we're responding to people and things like that. And it's always a learning curve. So any ideas, we welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. As I say, apologies again for lateness. Uh, I am very much aware of your smaller team. It has... It's been depleted over the years, I'm afraid, hasn't it? Um, and, you know, I'd love to see apprenticeships of some kind. Um, I know that you had two people um, who thoroughly enjoyed it, one female, one male, and they both want to stick with you after the end of the scheme. Um, so and <clears throat> the content of the scheme was very effective. And it would be nice to see, our, as you say, CVs are going up so that you get more and more reliability, but variation and so on. Trees are certainly a problem in a lot of areas. My area is one of those that was a very um, farmland agricultural. Uh, well, it's nice to find a cherry tree or a slow tree, <coughs> uh, you know, or an elder lad tree. Uh, we won't mention any more of those. Um, it is worrying. Some of the trees are so close, and I think they're Staffordshire rather than Borough. Um, they're close to footpath cycleways, things of that nature. Um, and they are touching people's houses. Some are council houses, some are not, and we're getting squirrels in, our, in attics um, or on roofs, and roofs being caused damage wise. And one of our local community centres is suffering at the moment. So, you know, it's very difficult to try and hurry up the process, isn't it? I mean, I appreciate you have to prioritise occasionally, but it's normally stuff. Your county council, we have problems with, don't seem to know whether it's do you direct it to highways or can you just put trees at Staffordshire? <laughs> yes. 
if I come back on the apprenticeship point and then I'll allow yep. Mark to come back on the tree point. So, as you say, we have had um, apprentices in the past. So, um, there's a gentleman called Ollie who we've just re employed as a charge hand, actually, so in a more management position, who started out with us as an apprentice, went to some external work and has rejoined us. So, that's really, really fantastic. And he's, 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 um, doing an amazing job. Um, likewise, we have a lady called Lou who's um, just secured a full time role in the team, having, um, uh, well, she's currently completing her apprenticeship. So, absolutely, where we have that transition of workforce, where we might have some colleagues who choose to um, take retirement, then um, obviously we go through a set due interview process. Um, but hopefully, the experience that they gain with us um, and the support they gain through working with the team and the experienced personnel that we have, it stands them in good stead to secure that um, longer term employment. And we have had staff who've sort of progressed through through the ranks like Ollie. So thank you for that. I'll let Mark answer the question on the tree yeah, once the, again. Um, you're quite right. The majority of roadside trees, the easiest way it's broken down, um, major trunk routes, major footpaths and interlinking footpaths are all Staffordshire trees, um, all the ones that are on the end. But we do have, there's a very big crossover where if a tree is 20 feet away from that path, it could be ours or it could be theirs, and it's a case of referring to maps. So there, there is a lot of areas that cross over that are both, but on the whole, roadside and over footpaths is Staffordshire County Council. Um, but again, if they are touching houses and they are low hanging and people are catching them we will go out and do them anyway um, and then we basically tell staffs that we're doing we don't always rebuild staffs because it could be a, a little 10 minute job where we've just run out and cut it on the way to another job but if it's a safety issue we will definitely do it irrespective of whose it is uh, but the majority of roadside and paths are Staffordshire County Council. Um, and, and if I may chair, there is a report it function on the Staffordshire County Council website where you can report numerous different things and that includes green services, trees and things like that. So there is a function within the Staffordshire County Council. Um, if you go on and ask for report it, then you can log jobs and the team will log jobs to Staffordshire County Council and, and get the reference. They also, they do have two different tree departments. There's their open space tree department and then there's highways. Highways do the roads and paths mm -hmm. and their tree department, if you like, will do <coughs> the open, the seldom open spaces that they own around town. There's a couple of little random ones. Yeah, and just to interject, when I went up to the depot, the other Mark said that you have done a very comprehensive um, audit of your trees and so if Staffordshire County Council has come back and said, no, it's Tamworth Borough, and we've said it isn't ours, then it definitely isn't ours. That's what he said. <laughs> we have actually, we've got three stroke four different mapping systems that yeah. we use. We've got old maps that are Ordnance Survey maps from eons ago, coloured in with crayon. We've got the digital maps that we use now, the Terranova system. We've also got Staffordshire County Council's road and street map, which identifies which ones they maintain. And then on top of that, we've got the tree preservation order maps as well. <coughs> and all of them can be worked in conjunction to work out exactly who they are. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm glad you mentioned about FAQs on the website. Uh, when it comes to comms in general, uh, I probably missed it, probably haven't, but um, what comms do we have to inform the public of how we carry out our grounds, ma grounds maintenance? Because obviously, you know, when people ask why aren't certain things been done at times of year, obviously nesting and animals and whatnot. And the uh, another part is obviously, uh, what comms do we have to inform people of how to actually report issues? Because obviously you've got it on the website and where to report it ourselves, but when it comes to the general public, is there anything we can do to inform them? Thank you, Councillor Wood. Um, I, I think we've, we've, we've just started the process to try and be more proactive in terms of before and after pictures to be able to sh take that and demonstrate the work we're doing and putting that on social media to sort of inform people. So that's a piece of work we, we've just started. Um, and uh, yeah, absolutely, we can potentially, to one of those, put in um, a note to, to remind residents of how we report issues. So thank you for that suggestion. We'll look at doing that in the future. Thank you. 
in, I'll take the two separate. The first one, uh, if we've got routes damaging footpaths, the footpaths does come under SEC. Um, if it's a Tamworth Borough Council tree that is damaging the SEC footpath, SEC will inform us that we need to cut this section of path out, we're going to remove the routes. And if it is that the amount of routes they're going to take away to repair their road is going to kill or damage the tree so that the tree becomes weak, we will remove the tree. But we won't remove a healthy tree <coughs> because someone's going to do a path. Paths can be repaired without damaging the trees, without taking the roots away. So depending on whose tree it is, it could be staff's trees if it's next to the path or ours if it's a little bit further away. That would all come down again to an individual of which tree it is, who it belongs to and where. Uh, but if there's a path that needs repairing because the roots are excessively pushing it up and the roots need to be removed and that will damage the tree, then the tree would come out, even if there was TPOs on it. If it was classed that it was going to be dangerous after the um, excavation work had been done, the tree would be took out. Uh, as far as branches over people's houses, uh, more over borders, there are common law states we... Um, we don't need to prevent our trees or bushes or shrubs growing into somebody else's property. Yes, you can look at it, uh, you're not taking responsibility of your trees, but there's also areas where if we can't get into the ground, we, we're not allowed to just go into a private person's uh, property and cut the trees. They are allowed to cut the trees. Even if there's a TPO on the tree, they can put uh, applications forms to cut them, unless the tree would need climbing to carry out the work in which case they'd refer it to us and we would carry out the work if it was deemed if it was a tpo tree it'd have to be assessed on an individual basis to make sure it wasn't going to damage the tree and whether it was in the deeds of the person's house but if the cutting of the tree won't damage it but the tree needs to be climbed then we would do it even though it's overhanging somebody's property so it's all an individual basis and judged on individual trees, individual properties. <clears throat> Does that answer your question? Or We can, uh, if it's over footpaths, Everything should be lifted over footpaths, but that will be nine times out of ten Staffordshire uh, responsibility. If it's overhanging uh, garden areas, the law states that everybody can cut anything that's growing into their own property. If we've got a really high tree that obviously you can't realistically walk out and trim it yourself in your back garden, then we would do it. <coughs> As, are the ones you're referring to is that not the case? Has that not happened? If, if you've got individual cases that uh, you feel we should be doing and we haven't done, if you refer them to me, I'll get them sorted. Yeah, I was just going to say, Chair, probably not the time to get into individual cases. Um, and also, we do need to be mindful of the resource that we have. Um, we don't have currently the resource to be able to undertake any private tree work. That might be something, you know, longer, longer term. But we, you know, we need to. We've got a three-person team to deal with all of the trees that we've got in the in the borough. So, um, but yeah, Councillor Adams, if you're okay, and um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark will. We'll link in with you if there's some specific cases rather than getting into the details yes, of specific cases now. Nice. Thank you. Um, 
who knew trees were so complicated? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's been refreshing to hear your side of it and how difficult and complex it is for y- you know you guys when you're dealing with them because I think that's one thing as members we might not appreciate or understand. So thank you for providing that context. It's nice to have that in the back of your mind. And just to reassure Councillor Adams, um, I had a lady um, who did have a hang- overhanging tree that was uh, she was worried it was going to damage her roof tiles and th- they did deal with it. So. Um, yeah, I think it's just nice to have that context. So thank you for coming and providing us with that. Thank you, Chair. Um, I did not expect to be talking about trees as much as we have done tonight <laughs> when I came to this meeting. <clears throat> I think I think the 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 lesson to learn um, from what I've heard tonight is just like anything in local government, trees are, are, are just as complicated, um, and it's not. The public perception with a lot of the, the uh, services that the council provide is it's just easy. You're the council, you can just do it. And unfortunately, in a lot of circumstances, that's just not the case. And it's not just that easy to just go out and cut down a tree or to, to trim it back or, um, or, or, or whatever. And, and I think that like with a lot of things that the council do, w- what, we, what we lack as an authority is our ability to educate the public in the services that we provide and how we provide them and the challenges that we face and that's something that we need to get better as as an authority is that education side of it with regards to the public and it needs to start from the roots so to speak we need to be going into schools we need to be speaking to the children we need to be explaining to them what we do as an authority not just with regards to trees but but the whole service that we deliver with the litter picking street scene for me are the unsung heroes of Tamworth Borough Council um, the amount of services that street scene provide on what is arguably a relatively small budget um, is just phenomenal really the the awards that street scene win for the flower displays, for instance, the, the, the various different things that, that you guys are able to achieve that puts Tamworth on the map, that gets Tamworth out there, should really be commended. And, and I think you guys do a lot of good work um, under a lot of pressure. Um, but, but, I, but I do think <coughs> if we're going to take anything away from this meeting is that, that the council really needs to, and, and I'd be happy to recommend this, Chair, is that the council needs to look into an educational program um, for residents with regards to the services that we provide and it needs to be around how how we inform the public of the services that Tamworth Borough Council are responsible for the services that Staffordshire County Council are responsible for what are highways responsible for what are what are we responsible for because unfortunately if you live in Tamworth and you're a resident of Tamworth Tamworth Borough Council are the authority. Um, the, the, the general public don't see that we, we are a two-tier system. They don't necessarily see Staffordshire County Council. So if the roads are rubbish, it's Tamworth Borough Council's fault. If the, if the paths need repairing, it's Tamworth Borough Council's fault. Same with trees, same with street lines, same with everything else. But as, as we know, you know, we don't own all the street lights in Tamworth, so we don't necessarily replace all the bulbs in the street lights. But I know there is programs that where we work with Staffordshire County Council, and again, there's a lot of that good work that we do in conjunction with Staffordshire County Council that the public aren't aware of and don't know about. So I do think the, the, the education is, is really important, and I think it's something that we need to look at, um, not, not, not just around street scene and street scene services, but around around everything that the council do and and i'd be happy to to uh, move that as a motion chair right. you have seconded. i have no idea i barely remember i barely i was barely able to say it the first time <laughs> yeah i think i we we need to investigate and um and and look at delivering an educational program for residents around the services that Tamworth Borough Council provide, Staffordshire County Council provide, or something like that. Yeah. 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 County Borough Highways, it, it's, yeah. uh, well, yeah. you know. 
uh, and I would like to just. Uh, great idea. However, I, I think that that needs to go to full council if we're going to discuss that. And second of all, we're talking about education and ha you know having being open to the public. That is why we are pushing for mommy and you know house to be reopened, which it will be reopened. No, and I just want to say I think that's a great point, and I think that should go to full council because you are bang on the money. You bang on the money. We need to, we need to push education. I just Thank you, Chair. And um, Councillor Price, I will pass your thanks back on to the team because, as you say, they do um, work really hard and take real pride in what they do. And they truly, having seen it since I've come in, work as hard as they can to provide the best services they can within the resources that we've got. So thank you for those kind words and we will pass that back to the team. Can I, sorry? Yeah. We, we just need to oh, yes, we need to sort this one out. Apologise, yeah. Just need to obviously cap, um, cap the price for his recommendation. Right, he's we had a mover. Did we have a seconder for that? We did, right. So, um, those in favour? I'm quite happy because then if it goes to cabinet, it'll go to, it can go to council. Can, can I just, just, just before we, we vote on it? So, the, 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 I, I've moved the motion, which, which as you say, will yeah. go to cabinet. And, and I think it, it needs to be investigated be, before. I'm happy for it to then be presented to full council if if that's whatever whatever the route is that it yeah. needs to take what? but but essentially it's a scrutiny recommendation that cabinet uh, as as cabinet in, instigate the investigation into this and then however that's reported back yeah because i just think we need to consider whether it's a full council decision whereas actually i think Probably it's a cabinet decision. I, I, I think that yeah. I think the decision would come from the would come yeah. from the investigation, yeah. but the initial decision so to instigate that. Does, does that make sense? What is the investigation? So so we, we there needs to be an investigation, whether that's via consultees. How do we provide the education, and then that the decision to implement that exactly. then needs to come from potentially full council. Okay, moving on. Right, you want to quick quickly. Yeah, just it comes to this one obviously i think what we're trying to convey really is to beat misinformation and people use misinformation on the fact that we don't do enough like you said councillor price i've never said anything about well, misinformation no. but you no, no. would but <laughs> yeah. but yeah no it, it it is there's there's a lot of um th there is misinformation out there but the, there is a misunderstanding uh, and and that's that's the key thing we as as an authority tamworth borough council takes a lot of flack for things that we don't do and it's not because we are a, a rubbish authority it's because they're not our responsibility and and in a lot of instances we can't do that we can't fix the potholes um, but we can report that to the authority that that is it, it is responsible for that and we're lucky in some respects as councillors that, that that very often we have links to people that can affect that um, but, but ultimately, as Tamworth Borough Council councillors, we the the change that we can affect is what is within Tamworth, and and a lot of that starts with the education of the residents of Tamworth, and 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 like I say, it's a, it's a it, it's a it needs to start from the roots. It, it's really important that we get into the schools and and we speak to the children from a young age. I did a project. Um, I think it was about uh, it was in my first stint as a councillor, so going back some years now, where we invited schools um, into into the council. We showed them around the chamber. They they had a talk from the mayor. They had a talk from officers, the leader of the council, about what we do, and we spoke to them about um, about littering um, and how much it costs the council um, to pick up litter, and the. What the feedback that I got from some of the teachers is when they when they spoke to the children after after this visit this day out, um, the one thing that they all remembered was how they weren't going to throw litter on the floor anymore because if they don't throw litter on the floor, there's a good chance that they could get a new play park. Uh, there's a good chance that that any other project that they potentially would want could be done because the money would be there and would be available because it's not being spent picking up after after people and that again it's the same same as everything else it's about education if you want a nice town then pick up your litter don't throw it on the floor because then 
the the money is available to do other things yeah. and it and it, it it's something that we we just I, I don't know where it's happened but it's just something we're not great at doing we we and and we really struggle with it and but it starts with that communication thing and, and it's really refreshing to see every department within the council is it, it is challenging how they communicate or how they've communicated in the past and looking for new ways to, to communicate. Um, and I, I just think we're, we're in a, a great period of opportunity as an authority. Uh, the, there is a new new leadership within the authority, uh, both from the council side and from um, f from the, 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 the political side. Um, the, so so the authority itself is open to new ideas and this is our opportunity or this is your opportunity as the controlling group to shape that and and to push communication and to push education um because it's something that that's probably been lacking in years gone by um but yeah yeah that's it really just well, ranting now No, I think if it's going to someone, then that's yeah. all that matters. I just yeah. don't think that it should, no offence, Councillor Price, but I don't think it should just lie with this, which I'm glad it doesn't. I'm glad it doesn't just lie with us to make that call. So. That's why I didn't offer up another subcommittee. To <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm one of 30 listening posts, aren't I, Chairman? Actually, they're called councillors, aren't they? Uh, I must admit, I'm trying to learn as much as I can from all of our officers so that I know what I'm talking about, which is a, a fair point, isn't it? Latching on to both, both councillors' points previously. Um, certainly, we should be the informants. Uh, we should be able to say, oh, well, and when, we, when there is a tree problem, for example, um, I quite I will often say, oh, that's a county problem, because I've just learnt that, you see. Um, or, oh, yes, I can ask Tree Street Scene to have a look at it. So I'm getting there information-wise, but it's certainly a point that we as, as councillors, um, whatever our colour, should be informing our residents, even if it's only in our own area, because, you know, people who are at work all day appreciate they have Saturdays and Sundays to run around the areas, don't they? Um, can I just diverge slightly, slightly on trees, but also on rubbish, but it is on recycling. Um, there's been a lot of storm damage which relates to uh, bells and uh, falling down from trees. Um, some of, uh, I've been struggling around, not, not terribly good at it, trying to get them all together in one place, you know, wherever there's a lump of tree, wherever there's a pile, I've been trying to get them all together so that they could perhaps be collected and help with the recycling for energy scheme. And I wondered if that was a potential, unfortunately, extra job for street scene. But I have got one or two residents much stronger than me who are willing to come up and, and help me out. In other words, you know, try and put them in a reasonable position where your council vehicle can come and collect them. 
Is this something that we could possibly think about? Uh, we certainly could, um, but a lot of it, again, would depend on where the areas, <coughs> where the trees are coming from. Obviously, if it's on a private... So it's um, yours or ours? <laughs> if, if it's uh, private, we can't do private work for trees. We're not supposed to be doing it. So as, if it's in a council area and it's in council green spaces or council estates, then there wouldn't be a problem. Um, the only thing I can think of it being a problem is if it was private establishments and private houses. Mm -hmm. um, that might be, but unless you could put something in place where we could start a chipping program and uh, put that into the biomass, but unless it was authorised, obviously it's got to be on council land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it was open space areas only that I was thinking of, um, you know, we, we have walkways past houses all the time, and occasionally there's a nice copse of trees. Uh, in some of our two or three of our parks, there are a fair amount of leftover trees from, as I say, previous agricultural days. And they're old, and some of them suddenly descend upon you. And we keep our paths clear to, to a reasonable extent, um, but it does mean that you end up with a pile of green recyclable possibly rubbish yeah of course um, anything like that if you just send in uh, a service request on the M3 system saying where the collection is and you want to pick it up we can pick that up and put it through the chipper no bother at all thank you okay. Okay. As, as far as trees, no. There's you, need, you need sort of like uh, flower beds and things. So, so the team will try. Uh, sorry, Claire. Yeah. Uh, the team will try to work as efficiently as possible. So they wouldn't want to go to one place in the borough do one job and then move to a completely opposite end of the borough what we would want to do i would I think it'd want to be as efficient as possible in those maintenance programs um what we can't say is we're going to be in that place on that day at that time because as, as mark's alluded to already there's so many different factors that can f influence that um but the team do have their regimes and their cyclical maintenance so we've just gone out of main grass cutting season and we're now in sort of um uh, hedge uh, shrubs and hedge trimming um, season. Um, partly, as we've already established, that the size of the workforce that we have, but also things like bird nesting season, where you can't, you're not actually allowed to cut um, till after a certain date. So we've just moved into our cyclical maintenance for for shrubs and hedges um, now. But the team will always try to be as efficient as possible. So if there's any cases like that, then. Um, if that can be reported to us, that would be appreciated. We did have, um, if I could use an example, we did have a situation where, um, because the extremely wet weather that obviously we have no control over, um, um, some grass had got pretty long. Um, when the team went on to try and cut it with the, um, the mower machines, it was just too long. They couldn't cope with it. So they then, we had to schedule for a tractor to go in to then cut that area. And obviously that needs to work around the other schedules that they've got. So there might be a slight delay there. So there was an example there, for example, where we went in with the kit we would ordinarily use. And unfortunately it was too long. So we had to use it, have another mechanism to do that. Um, but where at all possible, we will be as efficient in our regimes as possible. So um, we wouldn't want to just do one small area. We would, no, we would it, be- It's purely yeah. a cyclical basis yeah. uh, as far as shrubs and hedge maintenance. They'll have an area, they'll start there, they'll work their way around and get all the areas. We do have a lot of people see some work going in one area and go, why haven't you done ours? And then two weeks later when they're there, they're going, oh, they've only come here after that. But it's because it's a cycle. Um, and, the, and cyclical yeah. maintenance is very much determined on how long the grass keeps growing. 
because some seasons the grass will keep growing up into November. Other times, if we've had a drought, it can stop at the end of September really easy. So that has a knock-on yeah. effect as well. But yeah. there's no, um, there's nobody gets any preference as no. far as. And that, the set routes that they'll do for the mowing, so teams will go out and they'll do set routes on the mowing as well. Um, it, again, in cycles. Sorry, can I just interpose the um, I want to say different what question? Have got to have a kind of day at the team meetings for uh, where maps, where the set routes are, and everything. So we can have the team meetings for it. It's really at a very, very high level. We're not getting it more than that, ten percent out of it. But from what I can see from here, it seems like it's been very poor, and it overstretched. Um, well, if I may, Chair, yeah. Um, yeah. what I would say is we're trying to be as efficient as we can with the resources we've got. If it was an aspiration that people wanted grass cutting even more frequently, then we would have to look at the resource that would require to do that. Um, but obviously, that's it's not only potentially human resource, you've got to think of the... Um, machinery, the vehicles to transport the machinery there and all of those sorts of costs. So, And we're very mindful of the financial situation we're in as an authority. Um, but it is something we, we, we do continually review and we will speak to, um, you know, if we need to put proposals forward, we will always we will always do that. Um, like, like I said earlier, the REACT team that was um, fortunately put through... Um, in last year's policy change um i think our challenge is if we if we have um staff sickness or we have vacancies that obviously put pressure on 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 the system i'm, I'm touching wood when i say this but um you know we we're in a, a stronger position as we've been in a very long time in terms of the workforce and the, and the brilliant staff workforce that we've got i thought i was going to say i interject there and say that when I, I went visited the depot I did ask Mark about resources and he did say that you could do with a banking machine which is the lawn cutting machine that cuts on banks so it's much more safe than trying to take the ordinary ones down and I wondered if we would like to recommend to cabinet that they investigate um, the uh, purchase of such a bank machine to assist this area and you wouldn't be averse to that would you no absolutely chair that that would be fantastic it would obviously you know um as as industry standards and requirements mm. evolve it helps with the safety of things and we could do that alongside um we'll be going out for re-procurement re for some of our equipment which is changed on a um, certain yearly basis mm. we obviously we follow set due tender process um so we can add that into that process so with the committee's agreement and if cabinet were to agree okay. then that would um, certainly support the operations Margaret, before you, yeah. Yeah, Margaret, sorry, yeah. Yeah. so w would you be happy to move that margaret I'd be happy to move that we are... And you'd be happy to stay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> really? Investigating the purchasing of a bank machine. Or a bank machine. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that is. I don't know if you've got a more technical name. No, he said bank machine when I asked. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, no, I'd rather call it a banking machine. <laughs> As an ex-bank worker, I don't want right. to see an ATM. OK, I've even. got uh, <laughs> cans to stay then. Um, I just want to say that I think the work you do is great and I think we should be positive about it and I don't know whether it's in our remit as members to tell you if you're understaffed or not so I just want to put that out there um, and I just want to go back to Councillor Price's motion did we vote on it because I, we did okay mm. so I must have put my hand up Leanne did I vote for it brilliant I, I didn't realise we've been here for a while now so yeah there must be I think just quickly going back on to what Councillor Price said when it comes to um, comms, comms have improved over the past few months and so is obviously the grounds maintenance, street scene and, what, and the work it carries out. I think it's just getting the basics right first, isn't it, as opposed to 
do anything else flashy on top of it for now. Um, two quick questions, obviously. First one is obvious. When it comes to cutting verges or grass areas, we've had a few instances around the borough, and I think other councillors have heard this themselves, where the cuttings have been left and potentially on one instance down the Kettlebrook Road a couple of months ago, they were blocking the drains on the road itself. I don't, I just thought I'd mention that one. And secondly, unfortunately, I'm going to finish off tonight by bringing it back to trees. Um, when it comes to, when it comes to, obviously, you say there's different systems of like whose tree it is. Probably a difficult question to ask and probably a difficult thing to do, but has any work been done on unifying the ownership, like a, a, a centralised database or a centralised map where you just click on an item that says this is Staffordshire rather than having different altogether? Uh, as far as the unification of the data, they're actually working on streamlining all of our data issues. Uh, I was in a meeting yesterday about this and we're going to try, I don't know when it will happen or how quick, but we're going to try and make the turnover system the reporting system, the feedback system, all one centralised unit. So if anyone does send a, re a service request in, the um, inquiries people that deal with it will automatically be able to recognise whether it is ours, whether it's staff's, uh, whether it's private, who it should go to, and the second it gets sent to us and dealt with, there'll be a feedback going back to whatever member or whatever member of the public raise the issue how quick they'll do that um we don't know but that, there, there yeah. are processes of thought to change that that would be a it's going to be a pretty complex yeah um uh, thing to set up yeah. so um we can obviously feed back through um the chair and, and the portfolio holder as and when we get any further update on potential timescales but just to manage expectations that would be a complex task to undertake in terms of the grass verges we don't actually c collect the grass <laughs> because if you imagine the tonnage that would create we don't have the facilities to to deal with that so we no. don't actually um but we don't, not, you don't need grass cuttings on flat pavements that's what Mark said. But the, if we've ever got an issue, um, if there's a, a wide open open space next to a footpath and there is an issue where the grass cuttings have come across, what we can do is phone our sweepers and say, can you come down and get this mm -hmm. cleared up? So there never tends to be much sitting there. I mean, yeah. We do get people complain about the grass cuttings when we're still actually cutting and we haven't had a chance to walk behind with a blower or sweep up. Um, but if there is ever an issue, we can send a sweeper down and, as a reactive thing and cover it up. But we don't, other than the walk behind mowers that the guys are pushing, we don't collect the gas. I think it's just for clarification on when it comes to cuttings, just for the general public, like yeah. comes back to the education and informing the public. You know, yeah. we do do this stuff, but in the other cases, we don't actually do it. But yeah. that sort of thing, just yeah. so people are aware. Right, I've got a couple of questions just to finish. Um, Peat-free compost, you know when you buy in your bedding plants, mm -hmm. do your contractors all use, or your suppliers all use peat-free bedding compost? Um, we have a policy where we are using peat-free compost, so where we're doing replenishment of our beds and things, we, we do use peat-free compost. It's part of our nat nature declaration that we've made. Mm -hmm. um, and also we are working towards um, greater sustainability of plants as well. So mm -hmm. we're not um, repla you know, planting, taking out and then replanting um, where we can. We, we will use more sustainable mm -hmm. means of planting as well because that helps on numerous fronts. Um, having said that, we don't just throw things away. So where we did have some um, plants from uh, where we took some out, we did use those and... Um, through the sheltered housing scheme to recycle them to give them a bit of a longer life as mm -hmm. well but we are working um to support the the nature declaration and everything i was just thinking you know when we were talk that. we were had a meeting about it and they said that um you should check you what your suppliers are you doing or your contractors or this that and the other and i was just wondering you know do our suppliers when they when you get your bedding plants are they in peat free compost just you know i thought well if we're, we're being asked to do it we should do it and the second thing is um, advertising on roundabouts. I don't think we get any income from that anymore, do we? 
I believe we've done it in the past. It's actually a conversation myself and some colleagues were having the other day around um, uh, sponsorship opportunities. So that mm -hmm. would probably fall under but, there. But I mean, so if, yeah, if the ones that yeah. aren't paying now, we could yeah. take their their logos oh, out. So there's roundabouts where yeah. we've got advertising. Okay. And, yeah. If I may, chair, I'll take that back and we'll just clarify that with Mark yeah. in terms of that, and then yeah. um, provide an answer outside yeah. of the meeting if that's okay. Right. Okay. No more questions. Okay, we have got two recommendations. Um, one is that Bank machine, yeah. Okay. All right. So we've all in, we've already voted on those. So yeah. can I thank you both very much for coming tonight? Can you pass on the committee's thanks to all your street scene operatives? We do really appreciate the vast majority of the work that you know we see is absolutely first class, and you're very quick to rectify when it's not. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Chair, and Thanks. we certainly yeah. will. Yeah. And you can you can now leave. <laughs> <laughs> we right, we have <laughs> got Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that bad, was it? <laughs> no, we've got to do this oh, yet. Yeah. Right. we have we got a working group update, Councillor Price, from your <laughs> Uh, apologies, Chair. No, um, due to various reasons, sicknesses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that, that's fine. We've not been able to tie down a date, but um, I will uh, make sure there's a we meet before the next meeting and bring an update to that meeting. Thank you. Right. Um, I'm going to advise the committee. You'd like to see the asset management strategy at the next meeting on the 12th of November. And are you happy with that? I hope you are, because I've already sent it off <laughs> to be done. And what Sorry. the things I'm trying to look at is what our assets are, and um, you know what we do with them. Right? Did you want to say something? Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to just um, the next the next meeting, the one on the 12th of November. Is that right? Am I yeah. The right one? So we we've got um, community safety update, nature recovery update, climate change update. Is that right? Leanne? So, um, we, we have got a note. So, the nature recovery declaration, because we only had it a couple of months ago and there's yeah. been no update, it's not with cabinet. What we had last time was an estimate of the last attack and wait in terms of the medium. Yeah. So, we had a look at the climate change update, the, um, the community safety update, and the asset management strategy. Again, Technically, we've got a joint waste update, but again, we've only had it two months ago, so we were going to just ask them to send a brief and take yes. that work. Yes, yeah. it's just a lot of updates, Chair. I was just wondering if there was anything more meaty that we can get well, our teeth into and scrutinise. Well, that's why I want to look into the asset management yeah. strategy. Okay, I'm happy with that, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, so this is merely nature. Pardon? Yes. Anything else? We're kind of merged them. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> forward plan, yet. Yeah. Please, Chair. Yeah, the, the food waste and the caddies is just... All the food waste and caddies, the food waste, sorry, has been approved at previous council last year. Okay. So it's only about the purchase of caddies and yes. it's only a costing but thing. But I still think, I mean, have, have council approved what kind of caddies we're buying? Sounds very trivial, but, you know, the, it one can of come the biggest... To us, I'm quite of, happy one, if you want you to. You know, it's a relatively big change to the waste management and the way that we uh, we, we provide that. Yeah. And, as long uh, as we're not rehashing previous arguments. Well, well, th this would be the question. So it, the, what's what's going... Uh, are they 
are there options that they're looking at? Because if there are, with regards to how they provide that, the, the food waste collection. Um, because if, if there are, then I think that is something that we should be looking at and feeding into. Um, I did ask about it before, and I was told that previous to my uh, election, that this was decided in full council that... Yeah, no, not so much. I, I think... I, I think it probably has been discussed, and di but it, but more. Yeah, but you would like to look at the caddies in particular. Well, I, I think the way the, the way that it's yeah the way that it's delivered is quite important because um, you know we've we've done food waste before and got it really, really wrong, wrong. Um, uh, and and if we if we're doing food waste again, which I think is important that we do, um, then then we need to get it right essentially, you know. Can you yeah, no, can no. you let me and Leanne have a go look at what was already decided and I take on board what you're saying totally yeah. and to see whether or not what full council said and what yeah. what their decision was made, whether or not we can yeah, we would have a as it's the procurement, it's it's around what are we getting, and and if that is the case, then then we definitely should feed into that and have a say on that. In my opinion. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. <coughs> so I'll leave that with you, chair. I think what what. One of one of, and then the other one was just a briefing note anyway. Wasn't that the briefing note? You know, it needs to be... I'll let you finish then, yeah. that's the question. <laughs> uh, but, you know, so I want it to be given full um, discussion. So it's about fitting it in. So if we do that, and we've got asset management and the others, are we giving them enough time? That's my worry. So, sorry, you Go could on. ask for the... I have full faith in the chair and yourself to uh, to, to bring what's appropriate. Thank you very much. Right, Councillor. Just a recommendation, probably breaking protocol slightly. Could we not add an extra meeting in to discuss it separately? If you want, if like Councillor Couchman said, well, sorry, the Madam Chair said tonight. Basically, she left this discussion about open spaces specifically so we can get our teeth into it. And if that's the case, and not water it down with so many other things beforehand. And if that's the case, then surely perhaps an extra meeting might be appropriate rather than just trying to stuff it all in one in November. I'm just conscious. I think, I think if you leave it to myself and Leanne, we'll, we'll sort it to the best of our ability. Okay. Is, is everybody happy with that? Yes, as long as our priorities are right, I don't see a problem, Madam Chair. And you went through the priorities to the best of your ability um, to make sure each item had the full consideration from mm. the full committee, as well as uh, best we could. Mm. Yeah, I think I think it's really you know very important. Otherwise, you just become a. It, it, it's not effective. It's a scrutiny well, committee. Well, we're not a talking shop. We're a considering mm -hmm. body uh, who make decisions. 
the right. best we can. Okay, can I then thank everyone for attending and close the meeting? Thank you very much indeed.